She goes into her prayer space, this, 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 this very um, respected, important space for her. She is the only woman who lives here. There are no other men. And in her private, private area, there is a man, a very beautiful man. Why would a man be in her private prayer area? Look at her reflexive action. It's not to scream. It's not to run to her uncle and ask her uncle to come and see what's going on. It's her immediate reaction. What is it? All of the worship that she has been doing, the praying, the fasting, the making the du'a, du translates into action. What is that action? To call everyone who she has an impact on back to Allah. So what is her in immediate response when she sees this very beautiful man in her chambers? She says to him, <laughs> She reminds him of Ar-Rahman. She seeks refuge with Ar-Rahman if he is one of the people who is God conscious. Why would she say this? Why didn't she say, why are you here? Or stop, or I'm going to get someone. Why does she use Ar-Rahman? Because Ar-Rahman is the most compassionate. He is the most merciful. He is the one who will accept the repentance of anyone who turns to him. She is reminding him that if he goes back to Allah, no matter what his intention was for being in a very private room with her, that Allah will accept his repentance. Don't do whatever you're thinking. Allah is the most merciful. Go back to him before you do it. And Ibn Kathir mentions that he, Jibreel alayhi salam, was so um, impacted by the power of her words that he immediately just flipped into the form of an angel. And then he says to her, I'm just a messenger. I am here to give you the glad tidings of a son, a pure son. I want you to focus on her reaction after this. Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, Ahabi, Ahaba. In the, Jibreel alayhi salam used the word Ahaba. This is what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has recorded. Ahaba laki, hiba, gifting you, gifting you. If any one of us met Angel Jibreel alayhi salam, saying there's a gift from Allah, perhaps our reaction might be like, Allah has chosen me. Or maybe something like, Allahu Akbar, Allah, Allah knows who I am. Or, Subhanallah, I am, I am the one making it about me. I am certainly way, may Allah protect me from myself. But listen to what Maryam alayhi salam's response is because she is so invested in da'wah that she is terrified of how people are going to react to the fact that she is pregnant. No man has touched me. How is she going to have a baby when no man has touched her? Jibreel alayhi salam comforts and reminds her of this ability of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He says, be and it is. What is the very next verse? Allah doesn't tell us about the nine months of her pregnancy. After she's given the glad tidings of a pregnancy, of this gift, after she's had time to emotionally process it on her own, after she's had day after day of being pregnant and preparing for the fact that she's going to be a mother, is she giving birth in the desert on her own as a young woman thinking, Subhanallah, the moment has come. Or now my people will see that I am truly a righteous person. She is so worried. And I really want us to recognize that in her story, we see the humanity of what it means to be someone close to Allah, but not know how to process Allah's plan emotionally. So when you as a believer are struggling with something you're going through emotionally, whatever it is, whatever you're going through, every one of us has our own tests and trials. Remember, it's not because you're not reading enough Qur'an. It's not because you're not praying hard enough. 
It's not because you're not making dua with enough sincerity. Of course we need to pray harder. Of course we need to read Quran more. Of course we need to make dua with more sincerity. We only increase in these actions when we're going through a trial and especially when we're not. But the point is even if you're still sad and it's been five years since you've lost your loved one, that doesn't mean that you don't believe in Allah's plan. You continue to worship him while recognizing that he has a plan, subhanahu wa ta'ala, and that this life is short and that the hereafter with him is the ultimate place.